Hey all here, osmvdxreviews.com. You're watching our video review of the LG View. This is an AT&T cell phone that's on contract for $200 with a two-year subscription. And its main selling point is its built-in mo mobile, mobile TV flow TV service, which means for an extra $20 per month, you can have unlimited TV streaming from your cell phone. It has a built-in antenna to facilitate your reception, and you can just watch any live TV content that you would on your home TV set. It's a very nice feature to have, but otherwise this phone is very ordinary. In terms of design, it looks like a lot alike to the LG Prada, and that's a good thing because it's very glossy, it's uh, nicely designed, it feels very good in hand despite being made out of plastic. Um, but its down points include the touchscreen, which is a 2.8 inch resistive screen. Unfortunately, it isn't capacitive, so you really have to get in there with your nail instead of using your flesh. This also has haptic feedback on board, so whenever you press something on the screen, it automatically vibrates, just like uh, you know pressing on a real real button. So it's a nice little function to have. Reception quality and sound quality on this phone um, are very good. We found that uh, we were always able to have you know reception quality in our area, and the battery life was also pretty decent. It lasts around three days before we had to recharge it, with a moderate usage, of course. Um, otherwise, LG View is a very basic phone. On the back, we have access to a 2.0 megapixel autofocus camera with a, a self-portrait mirror, no LED flash. This phone is an absolute fingerprint magnet and scratch magnet, so it's going to show a lot of wear and tear and a lot of dirt and grit after you start using it for a while. Also, behind the back cover is your SIM card slot. All the buttons on the phone are weirdly positioned on the right-hand side, including the antenna, the uh, charger jack, which also dubs as a headphone jack, which we don't like because you have to have an adapter just to plug in your favorite pair of 3.5mm headphones. We have a volume rocker. We have a lock-unlock key for unlocking the screen and, and uh, accessing its functionalities again. We also have a two-stage camera shutter key for the camera on the back. The front only has three buttons, which takes you to talk and end and clear and back. And the main menu navigation, we have access to one widget only, and this is just a clock widget. Pressing on the clock will take us to the alarm clock functionality, and we can select when we want our alarm to uh, you know, be navigated around. And it's a very handy little widget, and it looks pretty nice in your home screen. Taking a look at the screen, it's a pretty bright and vibrant display, but it's absolutely useless un under direct sunlight because it glares like crazy. So you have to really place this thing indoors to, to really use it that effectively. In terms of navigation, we have four tabs. In the main menu, we have one for uh, calling people, which includes a dial pad, which we can call for our contacts. We also have access to you know, our, our address book, our IM client, and mobile email. It works pretty well. We also have access to our multimedia tab for watching live TV, which again, by Flow TV, I'm just going to go back by that because I want to exit and don't want to do too much. Video quality using live TV is pretty good, but it's sort of grainy because the screen resolution isn't HD quality, and streaming over the air is always going to not be as clear as using HDMI or a pre-downloaded you know, video clip. Otherwise, we have AT&T Mail, we have uh, Cellular Video, MediaNet, we have AT&T Music, which also dubs as your MP3 player, uh, which is pretty interesting. We also have a camera on here, which I'm going to show you, take pictures and record video. Camera quality is fairly decent uh, for a phone. It's not anything extraordinary. I can press on it once to autofocus and then press down to take the picture and it's going to take our picture. I can also edit it directly on the phone. I can send it to friends and family using Bluetooth or using MMS text or using a email. So it's got a lot of functionality on here. LG did a lot of functionality work again with using the resolution. I can also adjust you know, the screen resolution, I can adjust how much I want to use exposure and our mode that I'm using to make the screen brighter and dimmer. Just a lot of functionality overall that you don't get in a typical, um, in a typical uh, cell phone's camera, which I think LG did a very good job of doing um, because if you're a photographer, you can play around with this pretty easily and uh, it's nice, nice to have. Let's do a simple grid and you can see I have the grid now for centering different icons and different things that we're taking pictures of. The next one is your file manager one. It's basically your extra features on here, like an alarm clock, your pictures, your videos, your calculator, your calendar, and your tools. And under tools, we have some, some things like voice command. Say a command. Call mom, and it's going to automatically call that person once it recognizes that command. Or I can say call 425 something, 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 something. And you can say yes or no, uh, depending on that. And it works pretty accurately. It's nice to have a voice command function on a phone. You also have a notepad, which I can uh, write a new, new note of. And you know, I can type on it like so, or I can just flip over the screen, press the uh, QWERTY keyboard 
key, and I can also type a lot more comfortably. Of course, this being a resistive touchscreen, it's going to be a lot slower to type on than on a capacitive one, so you have to really use your fingernails and take things one key at a time. But if you get the hang of it, you do get used to it over time. I think it is a nice feature to have. Again, with that haptic feedback, the phone vibrates whenever I'm calling or typing on a button, which is always nice. With a tip calculator, a world clock, which is... Uh, I can create a new clock and I can search on different cities and views. There isn't kinetic scrolling, so we have to use this little drag bar on the side. Again, it's unfortunate. I can take a look at the map and find our city, which is a little bit nicer in terms of visual feedback. We also have tasks, a stopwatch, a unit converter, and uh, basic other functionalities. In terms of the cal calendar, we can also scroll back and forth between different dates and we can add new calendar appointments and uh, fairly basic in terms of that. All in all, the uh, the, mo the LG View is a nice multimedia handset. Again, its main selling point is going to be the fact that it has the ability to play live TV and mobile TV. It has nice features on board, like a good uh, like a good Bluetooth reception and a very good camera that has a host of functionalities. So overall, it makes for a very decent little uh, you know little phone for multimedia lovers. And it's not going to be a smartphone by any means, so it's not going to be you know able to play a lot of different fun different games or access you know the most recent applications even though it does have the ability to play back games that are java powered uh, fairly easily and even though it can browse the web but uh, you have to be expected to have a very basic web browsing experience uh, because it doesn't have full flash support and the screen isn't multi-touch or pinch to zoom uh, supported um, but again you have basic weather information, MyCast weather information, mobile, MySpace, and Facebook applications are all there. And uh, it's all designed in a very nice and sleek package. So if those are the things that you're looking for, then I think that the um, LG View will appeal to you, uh, especially as a uh, basic handset to keep around the house or uh, for someone that loves to watch TV once again. Thanks for watching our full video review here at osnvtxreviews.com for the LG View Glossy Black Piano Black version.